Hello, my name is Matt Dahlberg, and in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about what I think is an essential scale study on the ukulele. In this session, we're going to learn how to play a C major scale, the six relative scales to C major, and we're going to learn how we can use this both as a really great practice exercise, as well as how we can use it with some soloing concepts to be able to take our ukulele playing to the next level. So let's go ahead and dive in with the first part, which is just playing a C major scale. And that looks something like this. Now, if you'd like to download this tab, be sure to check out my Patreon page where we have this as well as some other books on soloing and scales available. But let's go ahead and try playing this very basic scale called C major. We're going to start by using what's called a rest stroke technique, which means we're going to be using our thumb on our playing hand to pluck each string individually. And as it plucks the string, what it needs to do is actually rest on the next string. So you see, after I pluck my C string, it rests on the E. If I were to pluck my E, it would rest on the A. If I pluck the A, obviously there's nowhere to rest, but it essentially pretends that there's a friend there to rest on. If you want more information on this technique, be sure to check out the link down below where I have a YouTube video on it. We're going to start by playing the open C string. Then we're going to play two on the C. We're going to use our middle finger here with our playing hand. Then we're going to play open on the E, then one on the E with our index finger, three on the E with our ring finger, open on the A string, two on the A string with our middle finger, and three on the A string with our ring finger. What you'll notice is I'm keeping what's called one finger per fret, meaning my index finger is covering the first, middle finger the second, ring finger the third, and if I were playing it, my pinky would be playing the fourth. So when I play this zero, two, the middle finger covers the two, zero, one, three, the index finger's here at one, the ring finger's here at three, zero, two, three, with the middle at two and the ring on three. So this is an ascending C major scale, which means we're starting on a C note, and then we're going to play a D note, E note, F note, G note, A note, B note, back to our C note. So let's go ahead and try playing this together. One quick note is make sure that when you're fretting this, you're getting right up next to that fret wire. It's going to give you the best tone possible. If you're kind of coming back here, you'll have to push a lot harder and you'll get a lot more buzzing. But let's go ahead and try this together. We're gonna to just do this ascending scale and we're going to say the note names as we go up, or at least I will. And it should be something like this. C, D, E, F, G, C. Let's try that again, starting at the bass. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the notes C major are going to be that C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. No sharps or flats, which makes it a really approachable key for learning different scales and stuff on the ukulele. Let's go ahead and try it descending now. So we're going to start in the same place we ended, the three on the A string. Then we're going to play two on the A. Zero on the A, three on the E with the ring, one on the E with the index, open on the E, two on the C with the middle, and finally open on the C. So let's go ahead and try playing that together a couple times, and I'm going to say the note names again as we go through. Should be C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Let's try that again. C. Now let's go ahead and try ascending and descending. It should sound something like this. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Descending, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Another quick note is you'll notice that when I'm building a scale and moving through it, I only fret on the string that I'm currently playing and I also will maintain fretting as I play through that string. So what that means is when I play zero and then two, well, I just do the zero and then the two. But when I play the open on the E, I take that middle finger off and just have that E being played. Then when I play the one, I add the index. But then when I play the three here, I leave the index where it is. The reason is I don't have to move it. And that lack of moving it actually helps make it faster and more efficient as I'm going through. Same on the A string. When I play the open A, take the fingers off, 
and then two and three, I'm fretting both as I go through. The reason for this is because when we're playing this scale style, we're trying to play what's called monophonically, which means we're playing one note at a time. So we don't want the notes to all ring into each other like we would with other exercises. There are times we want that style of playing, but with scales, it's not one of them. And so that's our C major scale, which is kind of neat. C to C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, back to C, right? We've played it ascending and descending. Well, we are now one seventh of the way through because we have six other scales that we're going to be learning here. And the reason we're learning these is so that we can learn how to play that same collection of notes all up and down the fretboard. And this is what makes this a very interesting exercise. The next scale we're going to learn is called a D Dorian scale, which has a big scary name. And we don't even need to worry about that right now because all that it is is a C major scale starting and ending on a D note. So it's the same C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, now just starting on D to go D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And it looks something like this when we actually try to play it. Now you'll notice we're starting on the second fret of the C string. We're gonna start with our index finger here on that second fret. We're gonna to keep to the one finger per fret rule that we introduced a moment ago, which means the index is going to be here on two now, Middle finger here on three, ring on four, and pinky here on five, ready to go for when we need to play it. We're gonna start by playing the two on the C string. Then the four, and that's going to be our D and our E notes, which you'll notice are the same as what we played earlier, just now in a different position on the fretboard. So we play that D, that E, the next note's the five on the C, which is an F note. So we're gonna take our pinky finger and we're going to add it there on the fifth fret of the C string and play that. The next note after that's going to be G, which is three on the E string. So take your middle finger, place it there on the third fret of the E. Remember, take the other fingers off. Then we're gonna play an A note, which we're going to play as five on the E string with our pinky finger. Then a B note, which will be index finger here on the second fret of the A string. C note, third fret on the A with our middle finger. And then finally, the D note with our pinky here on five. So the ascending line looks and sounds something like this. Now, when you listen to that, it's different sounding than the C major was. It's the same collection of notes, but it's in what's called D Dorian instead of C major. The only difference between C major and D Dorian is what note you start on. It's all context. For all intents and purposes, they're exactly the same in terms of what notes are constructing them. So let's go ahead and try playing this D Dorian scale a couple times ascending. We're gonna start here with the index finger on the second fret of the C, and then four on the C with the ring, five on the C with the pinky, three on the E with the middle, five on the E with the pinky, two on the A with the index, three on the A with the middle, and five on the A with the pinky. Now let's try descending this. We're gonna play five on the A, three on the A, two on the A, five on the E, three on the E, five on the C, four on the C, two on the C. You'll notice that we're using a lot more pinky in this exercise than we were a moment ago. And so if I were to ascend and descend with this and name the notes, it'd be something like this. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D. Pretty cool, right? It's now the same thing as your C major scale just moved up, starting on a different note. Now, why is this important? Well, there's two reasons it's important. One is it's a really nice little exercise, right? You can sit here and practice the scale and move up, and that's a great way to develop some new muscle memory and get your fingers comfortable. But the real reason that we like to learn these scales is soloing and to be able to learn how to solo with these scales as a sort of tool. Now, if you're playing something in the key of C major, and let's say you're playing a C major chord, you can sit and play your C scale with this. And it works really well. But what if the progression went to a D minor chord? Well, what you do is you play your D Dorian scale. That scale that we just learned a moment ago because it starts on a D note and we're playing a D minor chord in the key of C, it works out really well for soloing. So if you want to, you can actually practice going between a C chord, playing the C scale, and 
going to a D minor chord and playing the D Dorian scale. And it sounds like this. You can hear that each sounds like the scale and the chord, they really blend together and create a very nice tone. And so that's just two chords, right? We wanna keep moving forward so we can see how we can implement this with more things. So let's go ahead and go to the next scale, which is going to be our E Phrygian scale. E Phrygian, sounds scary, right? Well, it's a little bit intimidating to play too, I won't lie. We're gonna start with the index finger here on the fourth fret of the C string. Then we're gonna play the fifth fret on the C string with the middle finger. And then the seventh fret on the C string with the pinky. Then we're going to go to the next string, which is going to be five on the E string, which we can use our middle finger for. And then seven on the E with the pinky. And here's the dicey thing. We're then going to play eight on the E. Now notice what I do is I just stretch my pinky here. We've got two different ways that we can play this. We're gonna talk about both of them today. But for now, just practice that pinky movement, stretching that seven to eight with the pinky. And then we're going to play five on the A string. And then we're going to play seven on the A string with our middle and pinky fingers. So that scale looks something like this. And those notes being E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E are exactly the same notes as we played here for the D Dorian and here for the C major. Just now moving up the fretboard each time and starting and ending in a different place. So let's go ahead and try this ascending scale. It's really tricky and we'll learn another way of playing it in just a moment. We're gonna play four on the C, five C, seven C with the pinky, five E with the middle, seven E with the pinky, eight E with the pinky sliding it up, five A with the middle, seven A with the pinky. Now let's go ahead and practice descending it. We're gonna play the seven on the A, five on the A, eight on the E with the pinky, seven on the E with the pinky, five on the E with the middle, seven on the C with the pinky, five on the C with the middle, and four on the C with the index. It's pretty tricky, right? And the reason it's tricky is because that pinky has to do some extra movement. So what you can do is if you don't like the pinky workout, which if you're doing this as an exercise, the pinky workout's a really good idea, you can cross your fingers. And what that means is, when I move to the five on the E, I can cross my index finger to it. And what that does is it sets up one finger per fret, moving up the scale. And then when I come back down, I cross the pinky to seven to kind of set that up. So that looks like this. Either way works. I really prefer to use the pinky with all this stuff just because I think pinky exercises are a good thing to be doing. Our pinkies tend to be a little bit weaker than the other fingers, and this is a great way to build some strength in it. But with this E Phrygian scale, which sounds so scary, well, it's what we would play if we're playing in the key of C and someone plays an E minor chord. I can just play my E Phrygian scale and create that sound of the solo that's very E minor, but in C major. And what that means is, you know, my chord progression's going from a C to an E minor. That E Phrygian scale sounds really nice to kind of play within it. Now let's go ahead and go to the next scale here, which is F Lydian. And it gets a little bit easier here with F Lydian. To play our F Lydian, what we're going to do is we're going to take our index finger, place it on the fifth fret of the C string. Then we're going to play the seventh fret, which is with the ring. Fifth fret on the E with the index. Seven on the E with the ring. Eight with the pinky. Five on the A index. Seven on the A ring. And eight on the A pinky. So it goes on the C, five, seven, E, five, seven, eight, A, five, seven, eight. It's pretty easy overall. And those notes being F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Again, the same notes that we've been playing in every other scale to this point. So let's go ahead and try ascending this one. It's a little bit easier than the previous one. Start here at five. I'll say the note names as we go. So we're gonna go F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. And now let's go back down. It's going to go F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F. 
Now, this is where it really gets spicy because if you're playing in the key of C and you go to an F chord, it can sound really good to use this scale when you're soloing because it's going to give you a different perspective. If I'm playing down here, well, that's my C. That's my F. They're both relative to one another. This being a C major scale, and this being an F Lydian scale, they c contain the exact same collection of notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Just depends on where you start and end. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, my personal favorite scale, F Mixolydian. To play this, we're gonna start with our index finger here on the seventh fret of the C string. Play that. And then nine on the C with the ring finger. Then we're gonna do seven on the E, index. Eight on the E with the middle, 10 on the E with the pinky, seven on the A with the index, eight on the A with the middle, and then 10 on the A with the pinky. So it goes seven, nine, seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10. And those notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So let's go and try that together, nice and slow. We're gonna start with the seven, Seven, nine, seven, eight, ten, seven, eight, ten. Those note names G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's go ahead and go back down now. We're going to play that G, and then we're going to play the F, E, D, C, B, A, and G. You'll notice I'm counting this, or I'm talking about this in several different ways, right? I'm saying numbers, I'm saying the string names, I'm saying the note names. All of these things are worthwhile ways to learn this. And it's kind of purposeful that I'm weaving between them because you want to get comfortable being able to recognize these in all these different terms. In fact, one of the best things you can do is practicing the note names as you go through this, just to learn the notes of the fretboard a little bit better too. But this is where it gets really, really interesting now that we have the G. Because one of the most common progressions in music is CFG, one, four, five, right? And a lot of times people wonder what they can do while they solo over that. Well, if I start playing a C major chord like this, you should be able to play your C major scale and create a nice little sound, something that sounds like it belongs. Because you're playing your C major scale in the key of C major, it sounds great, right? So go ahead and try that. Go ahead and try playing your C major scale while I'm strumming this. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it, right? Well, let's go to the next scale now. I'm gonna to go to an F chord. And what I want you to do while, now while I'm playing this F chord is play your F Lydian scale. Okay? Look something like this, go ahead and try it. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Now go to your G Mixolydian scale. Go ahead and give that a go. Pretty good. Back to the C. You can hear how the chords create a, a texture that these scales really fulfill, right? If I just do just the scales and play it like this. Oops. You can see how it creates that sound, right? It's easy to mess up these scales, and if you do, like I did there, just keep playing. Just keep going through and see where you can recover. And you're, it starts to create a little bit of a solo sound because you're now starting and ending on the right points to create the context that we look for with soloing. Now on the flip side of this coin, this is also just a really great exercise. And if you do nothing else, the warm-up routine of playing your C, then your D, then your E, then your F, so on and so forth, is absolutely awesome to get comfortable with moving up and down the fretboard. Say the note names while you're at it too, and you're learning the notes of the fretboard as well, which is oh, it's just awesome, right? So many different things happening. So now let's go to the next scale here. The next one is A minor. Yeah, A minor, also called A Aeolian. A minor looks something like this. Nine on the C with the index, 11 on the C with the middle, or excuse me, the ring finger, one finger per fret, right? 12 with the pinky, 10 on the E with the middle, 12 on the E with the pinky. Same deal as what we did on the E Phrygium. We're gonna stretch that pinky up to 13, and then 10 on the A, 
and 12 on the A. So following the same sort of pattern, going all the way up. Now the problem here is I find that this core, this scale is quite a bit more difficult than some lower on the fretboard because everything's tighter. So you wanna make sure as you're practicing, you're really exact with your fretting so that you don't get any buzzes or unwanted sounds. But let's go ahead and try this really, really slow. So I'm gonna say the note names as we go up. So it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now let's try going back down. We're going to start with this A, G, F, 13 there, E, D, C, B, A. Now, this is tricky. This is way up there on the fretboard. And if you're playing in A minor, well, what's cool is the keys of A minor and C major are relative to one another. Remember, I mentioned that all these scales are relative to each other, meaning they contain the same selection of notes, which means the key of A minor and C major are actually one in the same. Now, they do have some different rules for when you're harmonizing and, and doing other things in there, but for all intents and purposes, the chords that we play and the scale that we play in C major and A minor are cross compatible, which is kind of neat. And so what this means is if you're playing in the key of A minor and you wanna solo in A minor, you can play your A minor scale all the way up here. The problem is that's really high. And so if I'm playing a chord progression here where I'm maybe just sitting on A minor for a little while, I can play up there, but man, that's so high, that's so high. So this is where the real magic with this exercise comes into play. So if you're still watching this video, <laughs> this is where it all comes kind of full circle. When I am soloing in A minor, I very rarely will play my A minor scale because it's so far up the fretboard. I will play those same notes down lower. So a C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, back to C. An A minor scale has the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A. They're exactly the same. So if I focus on the A note, then I'm going to create an A sound, right? So if I play my C major scale, but I focus on the A note, I can make my C major sound like A minor by making that A note the priority of what I'm playing. And to take it even a step further, if you look at the chords, an A minor chord has the notes A, C, and E in it. If I focus on my A note, as well as my C note and my E note, I can make it sound like A minor despite playing a C major chord. And this is the secret to soloing on the ukulele all up and down is if you learn all of your relative modes to all of your keys, and then you learn the chord tones of whatever's being played, you can create the illusion that you're playing in a key that you might not be. For instance, if I'm playing in the key of A minor and playing my C major scale, but I'm focusing on the A and the E and C notes of the chord, I can... that sound of A minor, which is really, really neat. Let's say that I were going to like a G chord after that. Still in the same key. Well, instead of playing my G mixolydian scale, which is way up the fretboard, maybe I play my D Dorian scale. Why am I playing D Dorian? Very simple. D is a chord tone, is a note of the G chord. So by playing that scale and starting and ending on the D, I kind of create a little bit of that G sound just by it being a chord tone. And I flesh that out with the other chord tones and it sounds just magical. Now, if I'm losing you a little bit because this is a lot of theory and a lot of concepts, that's okay. Watch this video again after you've worked on the scales for a while and hopefully it'll continue to make more sense. It took me about seven times to hear this information before it finally clicked when I was in college studying music theory and jazz and pop harmony and music theory for guitar, which I had an ukulele in that class. It took all sorts of different ways to hear it before it finally 
clicked. So look for those nuggets with these lessons, the things that you didn't know before, and then return and watch it again. But if this makes sense to you and you understand now how we work on soloing in this way, it's really empowering because now you can solo down low on the ukulele much, much easier. So after we learned our A minor scale, we go to our last one, which is our B Locrian scale. And it is awful. It's just dreadful. Like it's just awful, awful, awful. And it's awful for two reasons. One is a, an objective awfulness. And that is we are starting at fret 11 and going to fret 15. That's awful. This is not a good place to be playing in a lot. You can't get as good sound up here as you can down here. The other reason is a little bit more subjective. It's because I don't think this scale sounds very nice. Um, the Locrian scale has a lot of dissonance to it because it's the seventh, the last note of a scale, of a major scale. And so it just doesn't sound very resolved. But we're going to learn it so that we can have all seven of these modes represented. Take your index finger, 11th fret on the C string. And we're going to apply 12, 14 with the pinky, 12 on the E, 13. 15, so this is where you have to have a little bit of a gap. The pinky goes up to 15. And then we're going to play 12 on the A and 14 on the A with the pinky. So that goes B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And descending B, A, G, F, E. And then we're going down to D, C, B. Oof. It is a monster. I will not lie to you. I don't play that scale very much anymore because... Oh, there's not a lot of reason to. Now, a reason to could be a great exercise. It is a great one. Moving up the fretboard, playing all the way up here. It's a really wonderful thing to do to get your muscles more comfortable playing in the really dusty end of the fretboard. As far as soloing goes, yeah, you can use the scale. It works pretty well for a G major, right? Because in G major, when you're playing a G chord in the key of C, the chord tones are G, B, and D. So that B note can kind of create some of that sound and that can be kind of nice but generally speaking don't play that scale nearly as much but it's still a fantastic exercise just as i mentioned and that's the last scale of this exercise learning all seven of these modes in c and so to kind of wrap this up we have learned seven different scales we've learned how to play them we've learned how to name them and how to start using them for soloing Remember, all seven of these scales are relative to C major, meaning they all contain the same notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, back to C. These are also the, the scales for A minor, because A minor and C major are relative. And if you start playing in other keys, these are the scales for those keys. The key of D Dorian, for instance, might be great if you're playing a song like Mad World, for instance, uh, by Gary Jules. I believe that's the original. That's going to be a wonderful uh, key to play in for that song, in which case you can also use your C major, E Phrygian, F Lydian, G Mixolydian, so on and so forth as you're soloing. When you see a new chord change, you can go to the mode that that chord is related to. So for instance, if you're playing in C and it goes to a D minor, play your D Dorian scale. Or if it goes to G, play your G Mixolydian scale. But you can also use them based on chord tones. So when it goes to that G chord, if you play a D Dorian scale, because you know that D is a chord tone of G, that works too. And if you're totally and completely overwhelmed right now with all of this information that I've talked about in the last 30 minutes or so, that's totally fine too. Just sitting here practicing these scales, getting comfortable playing them up and down the fretboard is a really worthwhile endeavor to get comfortable with different elements of muscle memory and comfort with the, the fretboard. It's, it's something that can't be understated or overstated rather. It's severely underestimated how much we can do with the upper end of the fretboard. So. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in a comment below. The tab for this is available on my Patreon page, and this was actually voted on as this month's tutorial. So if you'd help, like to help decide next month's tutorial, be sure to check that out in the link below. In addition to that, I also have this in the keys of F, which is the same as D minor, and the key of G, which is the same as E minor, so that you can start playing these scales all over the place in different keys using these concepts that we worked on today. Thank you guys so much. I had a lot of fun working this out and I'll look forward to seeing you next time on the next lesson. Take it easy.